Okay, you guys are being recorded. So we are going to do lesson 16 today. We're gonna to talk about features at the assembly level. And that's gonna be things like uh, welding stuff together. And it's also used for making inseparable assemblies. So by an inseparable assembly, I mean things like, imagine you go to work for General Motors and you're making the floor pans on the 2030 Corvette or in Rachel's case, the 2030 F-150. She's nodding her head, that's a good thing. Okay, so inseparable assemblies, they're often used uh, when you don't wanna have tolerance and variation stack up. And I use the example of the F-150 floor pan because what you may wanna do is put something that's relatively uh, imprecise like sheet metal together but then you're gonna to wanna to drill a precise pattern for things like uh, the hangers for the transmission, something like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put something together, assuming it's never gonna come apart, you know, like a welded boat trailer frame, floor pan, something like that. And then we're gonna put precision features into it. All right, and this will get a little clearer as we go on. So let's just do it. Share my screen. So what I'd like you to do, go on over to lesson 16 from the website, and I'd like you to download part number 36. It's a piece of square tubing and we're gonna to weld together two pieces of square tubing as a starter exercise. What lesson was that? 16. Thank you. So what's for homework this week? So for Monday, you are going to do the V8 engine. You're gonna weld up my tractor bucket and there's a single piece part drawing that I'd like you to do to just stay proficient with piece part drawings. Okay, so you can click along if you'd like to, or if you just wanna sit back and watch, that's fine too. So this is part 36. And like I said, it's just a piece of square tubing. So as always, when we're doing a new assembly, we bring in the first part, it's fixed in space. What I want you guys to do is float the first part. I'm gonna come over here and click float. Now I can grab the part and I can move it all around. And I'm gonna mate this first component to the principal planes in my assembly file. That's simply to keep everything nice and square and true so that when I go to make a print, I don't end up with a whole bunch of angles instead of distances. Okay, so I'm gonna mate. Let's see, I'll mate that plane to this face. Coincident is fine. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna click right in this face. I'm gonna do a select other so I can click through to the bottom face. So I chose the bottom face. That'll go on the top plane, very nice. So my only degree of freedom left is sliding in this direction. I'll click on that front face and the front plane. At this point, I have a fully defined assembly, which is always nice. So I'm gonna turn off these planes and I'm gonna start building off that first component. So we'll do view, hide and show. We'll get rid of the planes. And I'm gonna bring in another part 36. And I'm gonna put it perpendicular and I'm gonna 
then show you how to weld them together. I'm going to click on this face. We'll mate it. I'm going to mate it right to that face. That's good. Make those two faces coincident. And now all we can do is slide along the pipe. And I'll choose this face and the end. And let's say we'll make it a distance of two inches. We're back to a fully defined assembly. Very nice. Get out of that mate. Okay, so to put a weld in there and make this an inseparable assembly, we're gonna put features at the assembly level. So we're gonna click on insert. We'll come down to assembly feature and we're gonna do a weld bead. Whenever I do this, I always use weld path and then I click on the edges that I I want to weld. So you can kind of think of it like, where do you want the welder to point their MIG torch? So those are the edges where I want to apply my weld bead. So this is the radius. This is going to be the size of my weld. Do I want a real fine little TIG weld or do I want you know, a, a much more substantial weld? Let's go with quarter inch. That'll be a decent size weld. And then down here we have define weld symbol. We'll click on that. There is all kinds of options for how to do welding, guys. I mean, welding could be a course in and of itself. I'm going to say for this course, all I want you to be responsible for is just putting in the most common plain Jane fillet weld. So we're going to go all the way around. That means it's going to be a peripheral weld. So it puts the little ball right on the edge of the leader right here. And that says go all the way around. We're gonna to want to weld exactly where we, uh, where we put our note to. So that's called a near side weld. There's also such thing as a far side weld. If you wanna weld on the other side of your call out. So for this one, I'm gonna turn on near side weld here are all your different types of welds. And you know, if you guys go to Pratt and Whitney at some point, you can get into all of these crazy things. So fillet weld, this is your common MIG weld. Uh, seam weld means just butt the two edges together, go right down the middle. Let's see, seam centered. The little X, this is spot weld. This is common with automotive stuff. But again, for this class, just go with a good old common fillet weld. And we will say, okay. And when we hit the green check, We get this very nice weld bead pops up. And we even get the call out for our weld. Okay, some of you may not have this turned on. This is an option that you have to turn on in your options. Is anybody clicking along and not seeing this? Wow, I hear silence, that's a good thing. Okay, but for some reason, my call out came out wrong. When you got the triangle up above, that means far side weld. 
that's equivalent to saying I'm pointing here, but click on or uh, do the weld on the inside of the pipe. Well, if you guys ever ask a welder to reach down inside that pipe and do the weld inside, you're going to get some phone calls. So let's fix this. Okay, if you want to change that, we're going to go under the weld folder. We'll expand the quarter inch fillet weld and we can edit the feature. Do define weld symbol. Turn that off. There we go. Okay. So now it's saying because the triangle's on the bottom, that says do a near side weld and weld right where I'm pointing, not on the other side of the metal. Okay, so that's pretty jazzy. Now let's try making a blueprint of this and see what happens when we port it over to the print. We're gonna do view, make drawing from assembly. Okay, notice. I don't see any weld fillet here. However, if we click on the view, we do import annotation and design annotation. That is a truly terrible dimension that came in. In fact, I think I'm just gonna blow that away. So if you bring in the design annotations, you automatically get the weld symbol that you created. And rather than creating a big blobby looking weld, you get this thing. Okay, this is called a caterpillar. And you can put those in manually if you need to. And in fact, let's try and do it manually over here to show the weld in the side view. So I'm gonna say insert, annotation, and we're gonna come down to Caterpillar. I don't know where they ever got that name. Okay, so I'm highlighting weld bead one of a SEM6. And as soon as I click on it, the Caterpillar automatically appears and it follows the whole feature right around. If you go to the top view and try to do it, when I was prepping for this lecture, I had some trouble with this this morning. So I wanna show you how I get around it. The problem is these edges are all visible on the top and they're sitting, oh, the well bead is actually showing through on this one. Okay. So let's just point to weld bead one of us M6 click on it. Huh. That was not working this morning, but it decided to work now. Okay. So rather than having an actual graphical globby kind of weld, we put these little caterpillars on and that represents the weld bead. Okay, so that's pretty jazzy. Okay, so that's how you do a very simple weld in SolidWorks, but we can do other things as well. And what you guys are gonna be more interested in is how do I do things like holes and cuts because that's what we're gonna do on your Sterling engine project. So I'm gonna ask you to bring in the component, just like I brought in these components, and then you're gonna cut the top of the can off, you're gonna cut the window in the front, and you're gonna do all of that as these sorts of features at the assembly level. Okay, and this uh, function that I'm doing now 
is very much like, if you can see me in the, yeah. the view window. Okay, this thing, this chunk of uh, metal. I'll see. This chunk of metal that I'm holding in front of the camera, this is an exit guide vane off the A380 Super Jumbo Jet. And no, I did not steal this off one at JFK or something like this. Uh, I did not design this, but I was on the certification of this for Pratt & Whitney when we made the engines for the 380. So when we made that, we drew the solid model, we had it cast, and we left extra material on so we could then go and machine it off and have nice clean features which you probably can't see. But for example, the tops of these hooks, that's all a nice clean machine surface. And that way when we put it in the engine and I've got a Mach 1 airflow going through this thing at 1200 degrees, this doesn't chatter on the case and wear the case away, which would be bad at 40,000 feet. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can put features at the assembly level once we permanently join things together. So hopefully this works now. I'm gonna click on that face right there and I'm gonna try and put a hole right down through this. We'll say insert assembly feature and hole. Of course, I always do the hole wizard. And I'm gonna choose a plain Jane hole, three eighths through all We're going to go through all components and let's pray it works this time. So I'm going to put it right there. That looks good. Of course, we have to smart dimension it. So I'll do the distance from the end and then we'll smart dimension from this edge. over here. And notice I picked a lower edge, but that's okay because I'm dimensioning only on a flat plane. So I'm actually dimensioning to the projection of this edge. I'll say, okay. And I put a hole in there. So that's great because it actually worked in this class period. And what I want you to realize is that this hole gets drilled after this stuff gets put together. So if I go and look at one of these components, there should be no hole. So let's actually look at this. I'm gonna click on the component. And I'm gonna say open. And the tube is perfectly clean. That's because the hole doesn't exist until everything is brought into the assembly level. So if I was building a trailer frame and I wanted to drill the holes for the axle, I might weld everything up, drill the mounting holes so they'd be exactly in position. And this would be a great way to do it. And you're probably saying, okay, that's great, but who cares? Okay, let's try doing another example where we do what you're gonna do on your Stirling engine Coke cans. And I'll give you an example of how I want it done. So we'll start another assembly. Let's browse for a component. I'll bring in my Coke can. Float it. When we do the model of our Sterling engine, do we need the label on the Coke can? No, no. I had a day where it was cold and snowy and rainy and yucky out and I wanted to play. So 
I took a can apart, I scanned it, I brought it in and wrapped it around as a label. You guys are welcome to do that once we get to the photo rendering lecture, but it is absolutely not mandatory. That was just me having a good time okay. in a very geeky sort of way. Okay, so I'm gonna mate the outer body of the can to axis one, we'll make it concentric. I'm going to put the bottom edge of my can on the top plane. That's good. Okay, we had a discussion uh, a couple of classes ago about do you ever mate the planes? Well, this time I, I almost have to. So I'm gonna mate this plane and this plane, make them coincident just so I can stop rotation. And now I have a fully defined can and it's locked in space. So now I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna actually start cutting my can. I can sketch on faces just like before. So I can choose the top of the can. I create a sketch. And I know this is gonna break you guys' hearts, but last year we had trouble with the whole wizard uh, doing features in the can for some reason. So this one instance, if you cut extrude a circle, I'm good with it. And this time we'll do assembly feature and we'll do a cut extrude. And CAD wise, that's how I want to see you take the top of the can off. So we have our, our component right here that remains unchanged. And then we have all the modification steps right here at the assembly level. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to put in the opening so I can get my fingers in there and attach all the connecting rods in the Sterling engine. So I'll create a sketch. Do a rectangle. And let's see, about 1.8. So that's the width. We'll go 0.9 so that it's centered. Distance up, three quarters. Sure, we'll just run with that. Okay, maybe we'll even fill at these edges just so we protect our fingers. There. Okay, we've got a nice fully constrained sketch. Get out of it. We'll do an insert, assembly feature and cut. I'll flip the direction. And there we go. So we've cut a nice opening in the can where we can reach our fingers in and make all the connections for the displacer rod and the connecting rod. However, our can back here is still perfectly intact. at the component level. Okay, so this is exactly what we did at Pratt & Whitney. We would bring in a raw component, 
that was just white cast. And then we would add a bunch of features to clean it up and make it ready to go in a jet engine. And I'm sure there are gobs of other industries that do the exact same thing. Okay, so this is what I wanna see on your projects, guys. All right, so let's see. That was features at the assembly level. Let's make sure I haven't missed anything in the lecture. So we did the tubes, did the drawing. So again, when you're thinking about features at the assembly level, it's either you're trying to have some inaccurate stuff put together with accurate features on it, or you're making inseparable assemblies like weldments. Okay. Um, that was about it. This was a relatively short one. Was that too fast for anyone? Does anybody need a, a recap of what we're doing? It's new, but relatively straightforward. I have a question. Yeah, shoot, Chase. Um, well, I did my can and then I, instead of doing the assemblies, cause we hadn't done that yet, I made a copy of the can and just started cutting into it. Should I just like delete all that and then do it in an assembly? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess at least I know what to do now. Yeah. I would try to be flexible, but on that one, I actually put it right in the project description. So yeah, I really do want it done that way. Okay. And like what features are okay to be put in before like we do the assembly? Well, let's go look at the project description. And I think that would be the better way to answer that. Hey, hey. Okay, so for your final project. Uh, Okay, so project is gonna be a single multi-page PDF. So I am never gonna look at your models. I'm never gonna look at your SolidWorks drawings. Document will start by showing the reader what is gonna be made. I wanna see the whole complete thing. So when you're talking about a design package, imagine you're walking up to an outsource vendor and you're saying, hey, Joe Vendor, I want you to make me something. And Joe Vendor is going to say, well, what do you want me to make? So when you open the design package, the first page should be, here's the whole machine, here's what I want. And then you go into more detail as you go down into the package. Okay. Okay. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So it's going to be the top level model. So you're going to start off by just showing the whole machine, overall dimensions. Then you're gonna show each of your sub assemblies because in your top level, you're gonna show how the sub assemblies get put together. Then after the sub assemblies, you're gonna show me all of the piece parts that went into the machine so that I know exactly what to make to make the sub assemblies to then go into the top level. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna skip item two until we do assembly drawings. Not hard, but it's gonna be a little weird if you haven't done it. Okay, so the modified Coke cans and the pipe elbow, these are gonna be done as features at the assembly level. Okay, which is what we just talked about. So imagine putting the pipe elbow and a little bushing together, you smash them together, and then you cut the radius of the can into the two parts. They will never ever be taken apart so that's a legitimate thing to do. Okay. It's, it's conceptually just like welding. 
Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Every component will have a drawing. The material and purchase part should be the vendor and part number. So for example, the CD is gonna be Memorex part number, blah, blah, blah. And the reason is that you don't know what it actually is. You know, it's probably Lexan, but you don't know. Memorex could have used something else. Uh, need to be sure that glue is on the bill of materials. So in the other section, somebody was ac actually asking about this. The way I want you to handle glue is I want you to create an empty component. You're gonna fill out the attributes. So it will have something like uh, Loctite number 242, something like that. You'll bring that into your assembly. Okay, there's nothing to meet. You just have to bring it in. That gets it on the bill of materials, which is your list of stuff that you're gonna buy to create this object. And then when you go to say, put the glue here, all I want you to do is put a drawing note with a leader and the leader is the little pointer arrow, point to where you want the glue applied and say something like apply four drops of item six, if that's what it is on the bill of material here. Okay. And that's completely legit. That's the way we did it when uh, I was making hearing aid speakers. Okay, let's see. Make sure the glue's on there. When it comes to tape, okay, glue smashes down and it really doesn't have any thickness. Tape actually does have a thickness. So I do want to see tape drawn out. Yes, it's going to be just a little rectangle or whatever shape it is if you want to trim it. But because it has thickness and it will affect the fit of other components, I do want to see the tape drawn in there. Uh, let's see, connecting rods, they will have the twisty ends just like mine. Okay, the twisted ends on the connecting rods. What I want you to do on that, those are very, very hard to mate. So when we did the trailer uh, hitch and clip, I showed you to put that little flat spot on. I want you to do something similar. And I should probably demonstrate that right now. Or at least show you how I did mine. Uh, so I'll just hide that, hide this, I'll hide the crankshaft. So notice that I created the twisted end as just a sweep along a helix. There's nothing special about it. But in the middle, I created that face by putting a hole up through the center. And this creates a cylindrical edge that's very easy to mate to. So I can make this edge concentric with the crankshaft and then the connecting rod follows the crankshaft around. Okay, it's a little trick, but you gotta do it. If you don't have it, nothing's gonna mate up for you and you'll be just tearing your hair out with this project. When you do yours, it would probably be good to make uh, the hole down the center just a little bit smaller. This is pretty big and gaudy, um, but for you guys, it's good so you can see it and you know what I'm referring to. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, how will we know like what, like the radius of that should be? Okay. So on that one, whoops. So 
So this crankshaft is made out of the 1 16th inch diameter welding wire. So you know the outside is a 16th. If you wrap that wire around and you left say 0 0.01 inches of clearance, you could make this hole something like 0 0.07 and that would be absolutely fine. So just okay, thank you. Okay. Are you going to be grading this plan against what we actually make? Well, yeah. I'm going to make the going to bring out the micrometers and the digital interferometer, and you know, if you're off by half a micron, then oh yeah, you're in trouble. No, uh, part of the problem is going to be number one. That would mean I would have to grade against how good your modeling skills are, you know, your actual toy modeling skills and using a pair of pliers. That's not fair. This is a CAD class. So when I look at your piece of paper, if I still have your, your Sterling engine here in Crosby, okay, I'm going to hold the paper in one hand, I'm going to hold the Sterling engine in the other. To first order, they should look the same. You know, if I've got a walking beam drawn here and I've got a vertical engine over here, yeah, that's probably not going to go over well. I would ding you for that. But I do want to see you at least make a valiant effort to build to the prints you make. Plan this out, build to your prints as best you can, and then you know, we, we got to let it ride after that. Mr. Oh, Vanessa? Sir. Oh, sorry, you can go, man, first. No, 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 you go, you go. I already okay. asked a question. Oh, okay. okay, Jack, you're up. Yeah, Um. so that balloon that we have to add under the crankshaft, I think? Yep, so the balloon uh, how right would we here. Do that? Yeah, how would we do that? That okay. was my question exactly. Oh, yep. Perfect. So all I want you to do is do not get crazy. Do not get as crazy as I did it. If you do a balloon the way I did it, you would have to define all of these convolutions. You guys don't want to. Yeah, Jack, exactly. That's a perfect expression. Okay, here's what I want for the balloon, guys. I got something open. You get the idea though. Drawing a print of that is gonna be really fun. Why is that? How do you dimension the thickness? You just blow it up? No, you just make a section view. Oh, that's what I meant. Or, yeah. I mean, that should not be a big deal at this point. Oh, there it is. All right. So would you just say like make from whatever yeah. part number the balloon is? Exactly. Okay. Make from Walmart part number, blah, blah, blah. Good, done. With the rubber band, I didn't actually cut any holes. Okay, that is all I want for your balloon. And then just put one loop of rubber band around it. So revolve just a little square that's approximately the size of the rubber band. Done, end of story. If we use the band on the balloon, do we uh, have to make that just a cylinder instead? Yeah, I would do just a cylinder and revolve a cylinder around. Okay, or a, a circle. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And you can just say make from Walmart part number or whatever the balloon is. 
Yeah, do, do not get crazy over this, folks. Okay. So that is features at the assembly level with a cut, a hole, and welding. So very useful, not super common, which is why it's toward the end of the course. Uh, but it is something that's out there that you should be aware of, especially when it comes to like machining castings and stuff like that. How would you model a machining um, process? You showed welding, but what about grinding? Um, okay. So let's say that we're back at this piece. So we've welded it, we've drilled a hole in it. Depends on what kind of grinding you wanna do. So for example, back to the airfoil, these surfaces, these were actually ground in a big grinder uh, with diamond dust and oil. That's how they get to be so pretty even though this material is just awful to machine. It's a really, really hard and yucky, but it grinds nicely. So if you wanted to do something like, I don't know, maybe we want to grind the edge off this. I'm always going to tell you You know, you could put some kind of a grind note on this so that once it's welded, you could have an operator come in with a four inch grinder, and grind a nice radius so nobody cuts himself on that. Your blueprint is not really process specific. There's something else called a manufacturing op sheet. Your blueprint says what the geometry is that you want to achieve. The op sheet is what's going to tell you, here's how to do it. It's going to say, go use this grinder at this feed rate with this coolant, blah, 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 blah. Okay. That stuff doesn't generally go in a blueprint. Okay. But, but like, what if you wanted to smooth out the weld bead? So first off, you almost never do that. There are metallurgical implications of doing that. It really weakens things. Um, so I have never done that. If you okay. really had to do it, cause it was, I don't know, like a Cannondale mountain bike frame or some high-end bike frame, something like that. Maybe that you would grind. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, just never had to do it. Never worked in that industry where it was required. Like, even this, even this airfoil, you would think as critical as this thing is that it would require grinding of the welds. Well, there's some air passageways, which I don't know if you can see. There are little bitty plugs on the end of those that are welded in place. And those weren't ground flush. We just left those. So again, once you get into subtleties like that at your company, you just go talk to your manufacturing engineer and they will hook you up with whatever you need. But you just tell them what's important for you as the design person. All right, so let's see what else we got. What's going on on the chat? If an assembly required a tight fit of something against the welded joint, could the weld then be ground down? Yeah, it could, it could. I don't recommend it, but it could. How closely does the real cutting need to be to the plan? I mean, this is a scissors and tape project. Make it as close as you can, but don't worry about it. 
when we do assembly drawings, I may show you guys how to do uh, sketching on blueprints so that you can make things like templates. That's really nice. It's really useful. Okay. So let's see, was there anything else? Uh, top and bottom Coke can should have their own drawings. Elbow should be a sub assembly before bringing it into the top level. If you have a part you modify such as the wires or the Coke can say make from McMaster car or make from whatever. Uh, do not fabricate parts and then assemble them in the same sub assemblies. So get everything ready, then bring it into the assembly step. So that would be the equivalent of being on a GM production line, hammering on a fender so you could put it on. No, it doesn't work that way. You get everything ready first, you get it all done, prepped, then you bring it to an assembly stage. Okay. So just make sure you read over this requirement, folks, as you set up your, your project. It would be tragic to get dinged on any of this stuff when it's been posted for years. So just make sure you read through everything as you go. All right. Do you have any recommendations on how like far we should cut the bottom can? Like how, how much height we should leave on it? Yes, absolutely. So I told you guys that when you do the crankshaft, the throw for the displacer should be three eighths of an inch. So when you rotate the crankshaft, that displacer is going to move up and down roughly three quarters of an inch. And okay. you're going to, and you're going to press these cans together about an eighth of an inch. So that is going to set where you cut the top of the can. As Did you, you get, say that in like a lecture or something so I can pull that up when I get to that part? Well, this is being recorded. So. Oh, true. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So just come back to whatever, almost halfway through this lecture and you'll hear all this jazz again. All right. Yeah. So the big thing in getting a Sterling engine to run, and I think I want to go back to uh, final projects. The big thing in getting a Sterling engine to run is you've got this displacer down here. And when it gets to the top of the crankshaft travel, you want it to be just missing the top excuse me, you just want it missing the bottom of the top can right here at this edge. And when it goes down, you want it to be just clearing this dome of the bottom can. You wanna sweep out as much of the volume as you can to get the biggest air expansion. And that's a critical thing. So Only if I, go ahead. How many foam discs will we need? Uh, there's going to be two in your okay. kit. The prints you gave us for those didn't show a hole going all the way through. Correct. It was just. Yeah, what I did is I had my summer work study in here working very diligently. And all of the discs were all CNC cut. And they have just a little starter peck drill mark. So I could show you where the center was. And that way, if you go and put the, the displacer rod in, you're not way off to the center. And then the displacer scraping on the side of the can. Okay. I'll make that hole all the way through, my friends. Yep, you're welcome to. If you wanna open it up, if you wanna modify your displacer foam, have at it, go nuts. This is your design. My intention is just to give you enough stuff to work with uh, to get you going. So what is that uh, inside your elbow? Okay, so right here, that's the PVC bushing that's on your list. And this thing, 
this elbow and this bushing is what I was saying to create as an inseparable assembly. And then do the cut to fit the can right here. Do this at the assembly level. And you don't have to use the bushing if you don't want to. The reason that I have it in there is strictly for bonding area. When I make all of mine, I put double-sided tape between the can and the elbow and the bushing right in this joint right here. Uh, because I originally designed this Sterling engine project as something that could be done in an afternoon. So I didn't want to wait for a bunch of glue to dry. And by having this extra bonding area, if I use outdoor double-sided tape, it sticks like downtown and you, know, you just push it up and you're done. And it works really nice. Uh, could you weld the elbow and the coke can together? Welding okay. aluminum to PVC? Yeah. Uh, that might be dicey. Oh, OK. Uh, you, you could model hot glue as welding, but it'd probably melt because of the heat. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go with, I don't know about hot glue. You could try it. I mean, again, um, you're not getting graded on the success of your engine. So if you want to take some chances, go ahead. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, would it stick? On, yeah, it I don't know. Depends on what the hot glue is. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so you've got two radically different temperatures. You've got a thousand degree candle flame down here and you've got ice water up here. So is the cold gonna dominate from the ice water? I don't know. I tend to think it's gonna get a little warm, but I've never had the double-sided tape fail either. So, you know, if you wanna try it, go for it. Okay, so let's see, back to some actual, uh, back to some actual stuff. All right, is there anything else that I'm missing on the lesson? Otherwise, I'm gonna cut you guys loose and you can start with your homework, which is welding up my tractor bucket. Okay, so we did putting holes. I showed you that the features only reside at the assembly level. They don't go down into the piece part level. No holes or well marks. Okay. This, my friends, is gonna be your other piece of homework. This is the bucket off my tractor. So you're gonna get a chance to weld up a solid model. Let's go over to lesson 16. And there's a homework, there's a folder called homework tractor bucket. So if you download it and open up the assembly file, you'll see the solid model and it's all put together. You don't have to assemble it, but you do have to do the welding stuff. And I actually included some pictures. So for example, there's a stitch weld right here. That's what a stitch weld or an intermittent weld looks like in real life. Here's some of the seam welds. That's a full length seam weld on the outside. Here's the weld that goes around the top gussets. And eh, just a general picture to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I probably, the one thing I haven't covered yet that I should have covered so we've got this nice all around weld. The problem with doing an all around weld is it puts a lot of heat into the part and it can cause distortion, which Professor Young will tell you all about later. Suffice it to say it does. 
So one of the ways we can control heat is by making an intermittent weld or a stitch weld. And we can actually model that in SolidWorks. So if I come over here and I click on intermittent weld, yeah, let's just go with the defaults. So you could tell the machinist or the welder, weld so far, leave a gap, weld so far, leave a gap. Okay, so it's the intermittent weld option that you're gonna use to create this gap, then weld, then gap, then weld, okay? All right, so go ahead guys, start on the tractor bucket, get it welded up, and I will answer any questions you have until the end of the class. If you get done with the V8, the tractor bucket, and the piece part drawing, and you wanna take off, knock yourself out, take off. Have at it. Okay, Aubrey, as far as the motor stuff, good question. So I promised you guys that before Thanksgiving, I would sit down with everyone and I would go over your plan and I would go over where you're at. And basically I'm gonna say, okay, you promised me you would be here. Show me your model, show me certain parts, show me that you're on track with your project plan. So as far as that goes, we do have a sign up sheet and I've already got it posted. If we go back to the website, under the final project, I have the project progress check sign up sheet. So I'm thinking that I'm only gonna sit down with you guys for like 15 minutes, because I don't think it takes any longer than that. I generally just spot check and make sure you're on track. So if you wanna sign up for a, a check of your solid model, you can just put your name in any one of these boxes to reserve a time. And we'll just start up a Zoom meeting and check your stuff. As soon as you show me that you have a plan for how to use the materials, then you can come by Crosby and pick up your stuff. Or if you're somewhere else on the planet, then I, I will mail your baggie out. So the front of the bucket isn't actually in this assembly? It's open so you can pick up dirt. Do I understand the question? The hard steel blade in the front. The cutting edge? No, it's not. Yeah. Okay. No. Nah. Because the cutting bar itself is actually a replaceable item. Okay. So you don't want to weld that on. Sometimes they get welded on. Yeah, but I'm not that redneck. Fair enough. Uh, how do we know how big the welds are? Just go ahead and assume quarter inch. Quarter inch, all right. How is that attached then? I'm looking at the photos and it looks welded. Yeah, it's not. Oh, my cutting edge is actually bolted on. And the bolts get really beat, but, eh, you know. Cold chisel, take them off. So on the uh, top of the bucket, yep, that intermittent weld, they're like the first and like the last weld where they connect to the, like where the bucket connects to your tractor. Yep. They're longer than the rest of them. Like how would we do that? Oh, don't even worry about that. Okay, no. just put an intermittent, intermittent weld through the whole thing. 
So okay. as long as you put uh, three inches of weld, three inches of space, three inches of weld, that's fine. That's all I'm okay. looking for. And when you do the little triangle gussets up on the top, you're gonna to find that the weld feature follows the edge all the way out. It doesn't stay as a nice uh, weld between two faces. Just let it go out, that's fine. So one more time, we go to view and features at assembly level. No, uh, insert features okay. at the assembly level. Oh, so what's hey, happening? Sorry, right, you can go, go man. It. Here you go, you're good. Uh, mine's not even, no, you're good, you go. All right, Jack, you're up. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, once again, what type of um, welding we need to do on the uh, parts of the, of the tractor thing? Forgot the name. So you're just gonna do a simple fillet weld. You'll do a quarter inch bead between the, uh, or on the edges that I've specified. Okay, thank you. And for the uh, top weld, what should the spacing be again? For the intermittent one? Yes. Uh, three inches of weld, three inches of space. I think it was Thank on. Mind if I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. It's all yours. So, I feel like I'm missing something really simple. I can't, this is all I can scroll. Okay, on. so first off, hit weld path instead of weld geometry. Um, uh, up, left, okay. there you go. So now in the blue box, click on the edges that you want. And okay. then on the radius, quarter oh, okay. inch. Is that for everything on this work? Yeah. There you go. Nice. Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah, let's fix that. So that's a near side weld. You're, or excuse me, that's a far side weld. You want a near side. And where do I so, find the feature? Okay, so go up under the weld folder in the part manager. Go up. Okay, hit that little triangle next to it. Yep, and then expand that one too. There you go, that will be, let's edit that feature. And then define weld symbol, nice. Okay. And then turn off the one in the top. See where it says weld symbol on the top? There you go, and say okay. Okay. There you go, beautiful. Nice. Which one is the tractor bucket? Or where do I download that? Uh, go under lesson 16, there's okay. a folder. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, I see it right there. Okay. I sent you an email about this, but is it true that you give out uh, machine shop training? In a normal year, yes. Um, this year, yeah, not so much. So was that um, Olivier that was saying that? Yeah. Yeah. This year, I've really put the brakes on shop training. Even if I double mask and double glove? Even if you wear a spade suit. Jeez. 
Yeah, I know. I'm hard that way. Uh, um, yeah, Jacob. Uh, do you mind if I share my screen for a quick second? Make sure all, I'm doing this right. It's all yours. Go for it. So I just did the weld over here and not sure I did it right because on this side doesn't look like it went all the way through. But this could just be me. Uh, don't worry about things like burn through. I mean, that's, I'm not worried about that. And I think on that one, I told you guys, just put the weld on the outside. All right. So and this is should. just fine. And do it on the yeah, other side too? Absolutely, yeah. That's good, that's good. And just have to do it on the other side and any so, other welds. So one thing, Jacob, yes. you've got the peripheral modifier turned on, that little ball on the end of the leader. Yes. Okay, so that's not an all around kind of thing. So you can turn that off. If you're just doing one edge, doing a straight line, yeah, you want it just like you got it. And then- So right here is fine? So that quarter inch one, that that doesn't look correct. It should say something like eight, three by three. Okay, so the call out's right. Okay, so you got intermittent weld. Weld path, gap and weld length, that's all good. Would we under defined weld symbol or? No. Go ahead and say okay. And there we go. That's the, that's the call out I wanted to see. Okay, now you're good. I'm having a hard time selecting an edge maybe it's not an edge that needs to be welded but it's like underneath the gusset uh go ahead and show me right in here yeah you don't need to do that one if i do this one it's gonna go all right here is that all right that's fine that's the one i was warning you guys about okay yes it is welded there but that's just a solid works thing. Why won't it show me the bead? It will after you hit the green check mark. I mean, like it's not showing me this thing when I click on this. So when I do it, I generally do one weld bead then I say, okay. Then I create a separate feature and go on to the next one. Okay. Um, Mr. Abadessa. Sir. You know, like the little welding symbol that it pops up with, like the triangle on top of the line? Yep. Well, mine's on top of the line and okay. I tried to get it below the line and it kind of just did it on both sides of the line. Okay. So go ahead and show me your screen, please. So okay. like I tried to. Yeah. Okay, so let's fix that one. What I'd like you to do is go over to the part manager on the left and expand that weld folder. Go up, 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 up. Hit the little triangle next to weld. Okay, good. Now expand, good. Now edit that feature. Okay, yep, click on weld symbol. So toggle that, fill it off. Toggle it off. Yep, click on it. That'll turn it off. And then go down a weld symbol below. Okay, that one's on, that's good. And say, okay. Okay. And um, I had another quick question. Yeah, shoot. Do we, do we weld this outside one? Just the one you've got highlighted right now. That's fine. Okay, so just do that one on both sides. Yeah, and you're gonna wrap around under the bucket and you'll go up over the top. Uh, but okay, you don't do have we... to, you don't have, yeah, stop right about there. That's fine. Okay, do we weld the curve or no? Yeah, weld the curve. Okay. And um, 
this little the little gusset here. Yep. When you select it to weld it, do you pick that little tiny edge too? It doesn't that. really matter. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm working on the V8 engine right now, and I'm having issues trying to add in the mates so, like, everything lines up. Like, I'm trying to just, like, locate the block right now. Sure. But it's not letting me, like, click on other things to add in. Okay. Go ahead and show me. So the first question I would always ask you is, did you float it? Um, I just have it like this right now. Okay, so seeing the assembly manager on the left, it's got that F next to the block. Yes. That, that means it's fixed. That's why you're having trouble. Oh. So right click, go down a float. Okay, see how it has a minus sign now and you can yeah. move it all around? Okay. That was so, your whole problem. How do I, I was trying to, yeah, like what I was running into earlier before that, like the issue was it wouldn't let me select more than one face at once, basically. Okay, so yeah, first I mean, off, let's go over to assembly on the top. Down, down, left, up, there we go. Click on the mate, so let's get in the mate command. Okay, now click the back face, good. Click the right plane, good. So it's gonna make those two coincident, that's fine. Hit the green check in the little Dialogue, okay. So what I did on mine next was, do you have your three axes? In here, yeah. Yep, okay. So what I did is I took the axis and I made it concentric with that face, yep. Okay, so that's just an intersection. That's not really an axis. If you want the axis proper, Go over to the assembly manager, go down. See the little yellow icon? There you go. Click that axis too. Click axis, click axis two and then hit mate. That'll let you pre-select it. Oh, okay. Concentric, good. Okay, so now try moving your block around and show me what doesn't go right. It rotates okay. like that. Okay. And then er earlier you had it mated with the face. I was just having issues because I was trying to get to like click twice because I didn't go up here and click mate. Ah, okay. Yeah, you just weren't in the command yet. Yeah. Okay. Look, can I show you the bucket one more time? I think I have it done. I just want to make sure I got all the welds in. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Thank you. Yep, no problem. I have one weld, and then one here yeah, that goes up around this curve. Yep, poking good. Up there. It goes all around this triangle, all the way around that, and over here. Okay, so the one thing that I see that's missing, the two end plates of the bucket are about to fall off. Oh, those need to be welded all the way around? Not all the way around, but at least go around, um, how do I put it? The inside back edge. They're just right here. No, it's, it's welded on the back side of the bucket. Oh, that back edge, back here. Yeah, right inside that little groove. And back here, right? Yep. Anything else? Uh, the rest of it looks good. Okay. Does this need to be welded back here? Nah, the bucket's only welded on one side of the those support ears. Okay, thanks.
So Andrew, this is probably a good time for me to show you that uh, logo transfer stuff I was talking about. Oh yeah. So let me, let me take a minute. I'll get set up for that. You keep doing what you're doing and then we'll, I'll show you the method. The rest of you guys might like this as well. So let's see, I gotta have, I gotta have a picture. Um, Mr. Abadesa. Yeah, Ethan. So, you mind if I share my screen real quick? Yep, it's all yours. So, I think I got everything done, but I was listening to you talk to Andrew. And did you want this, like, this bead to go all the way around the edge of the... Because I put it, like, all the way around there. Yeah, that's, what, that's the way it should be. Okay, oh, perfect. I only did it at the back. I see. That makes more sense. Yeah, because otherwise when I push dirt with it, it would start ripping the bottom open and I'd be very unhappy. And then um, I put this one here and I noticed on the back side there's a little bit of, is that just bleed through from the weld on the other side? That's exactly it. Yep. Okay. And that's fine. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Andrew. So show and tell time. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a drawing with no model attached to it. So I'm gonna go new piece part drawing. I'll say, okay. Not even gonna attach anything. I'm gonna get rid of the format. Get rid of the second sheet. Get rid of the views. Okay, so I have nothing but a piece of paper right now. And I'm gonna insert a picture. And let's say I wanna be really cool and I wanna copy the profile lines of this airplane. I can sketch right on the sheet. And I will do drawing. No, I'll click on sketch. And I can click on line here to here, here to here, here to here.
And do not remotely think that I'm about to fully constrain this. I was going to just say, if you have to fully define this, I completely understand why these things are so expensive. The stamps, not the airplane. This was actually the first airplane I ever flew. And I miss it tremendously, but it is ungodly expensive. Okay, so I just went around the perimeter of my airplane. Now I can get rid of the drawing. There's my lines. I'm gonna hit Control A and Control C. I'm gonna put the lines on the clipboard. And now I'll create a new part. So you can do something like that. Nice. And where this gets kind of cool, if you think about it, if I were to go over to the Crosby hot wire cutter, I could cut this profile out just off any old picture and get it, you know, kind of sort of right. But then I could come along and I could do a top view. And I could do the same thing. I could do a cut and I could get the top view exactly right. And that would go a long way toward making the actual shape of this aircraft. That's so could, great, but what if you have lettering? Oh, that's good. Okay, so let's say I wanna put US Army across this. I mean, if you wanna extrude letters, yeah. 3D letters. Yeah, let's actually do that. We'll put US Army across this thing. Uh, oh boy, here we go. Insert. There is a note option where you can actually do that. Where is it? No, nah, I don't think this is what I wanted. All right, even I have to resort to Google at times. All right, no political ads. We don't do politics in 120. All right, we are totally apolitical in this, guys. Okay, tools, sketch entities, and text.
tools, sketch entities, text. That feels more like what I wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it mean when the grader says, uh, don't put anything in the revision block? They should say, don't put anything under the revision block. So what that means. Cause I got, I got that on every single one of my problems. Okay. And I didn't know what I did wrong. Okay. Then let's show you. That was really neat, but yeah. So. As far as the airplane stuff, yes, you absolutely can. And yes, this can be made the proper size. And yes, if I had been prepared, yes, I can do it. But that's how you would do something like 3D print lettering into a solid model. Okay, so you go to sketch text no, on you, a curve? You, you gotta put a curve in first for the text to follow. Okay. Make sure it's a um, make sure it's a construction line, so you don't yeah. mess mess up the uh, extrusion. So put a construction line in. Put your text in. Your text will follow the construction line. So you can make it arch. You can make it do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I had a student one year who did three hundred eight Winchester on the bottom of a brass rifle cartridge right around huh. in a circle. I thought that was pretty schnazzy. So um, you got our tools then? Yep, tools. Go down to sketch entities and text. Okay. And then you create a sketch 
put a construction line in for the text to follow. Just type the text in and give the size. Thanks. Okay, now back to don't put anything under the rev block. Uh, let's see, I need a print. Come on. There. Uh, let's see. Okay. So what the grader was saying on that one. Get this out of the way. Right here. So what I do not want you guys to do is put any graphics or anything to the right of this line all the way down to right here. Okay, and the reason that I ask that is that as this part goes through its life in any company, you're going to have changes to the part and they're going to be listed right down here from top to bottom. And you're, you never ever move the views through the entire life of the part. So you got to have room to move to account for your changes over here. That's why the grader was saying that. So if you wanted to even move one of these, one of these views when you're in a real company, you have to do a full engineering change order to say you're doing a documentation change just to move the view. And that would have to be recorded over here. So it's just planning ahead. Trust me, you don't want to be doing engineering changes just for documentation stuff. Doing okay. them for real is painful enough. Yeah, I didn't, I guess I missed that during that lecture because I got yeah. docked wicked on all those ones for that. Yeah, so. so just stay away from this whole region. Just stay out of here. Fruit flies. And I would encourage you guys, whenever you're handing in drawings, take a look at those example drawings and just go down the list of do's and do nots that I put in big red letters. It'll save you a bunch of points in time. Mr. Abadessa? Sir. I've got a question about the tractor piece. Okay. I'll share my screen. Please do. All right, so I got this thing here. I got the majority of my welds all in. Okay. And on the welds on the side here, do you have to have it follow the curve up, or do you, or do you just leave it there? No, you, like can just, the top you can just leave it there. Okay. Because honest answer, if you even did try to follow it up, you're just going to burn off that little tip of, of that metal anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then my second question is, for this curve here, or, uh, is it okay to follow there, or follow it from there all the way around down the back to the front here? Yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. That was it. So do you have the weld on the other side? Yes. Okay, I just didn't see it. As long it, as it's it just there. It bled through, that's all. Okay, that's all good. So do we need to hand in the original assembly and the welded assembly or just the welded and all the parts? So I was assuming that you would take the original assembly and once you save it with your welds in it, then you're gonna hand that in. Okay. Can I have you look at my bucket real quick? Absolutely, go for it, Brayden. Okay. 
So on your stitch weld, that doesn't look correct to me. Because I think I told you guys, three inches of weld, three inches of space. So just double check those dimensions. Okay, and then, so your gussets look good. You got both sides welded. You got the side plates welded on, that looks good. Uh, yeah, it's from what I can see here, that looks fine. Um, so you said just change that to what were the dimensions? I want to say I told you guys three inches of weld, three inches of space. All right. Simple. Perfect. Then we'll update that. There. Yeah. That, right. that looks fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I got her to work. Thank you so much. Okay. I can't figure out how to edit the text once it's in place, but... You can double click, probably. Yeah. There's just a bunch of lines in sketch now. Now, it is associative. I've gone in and edited those before. Just one of those oh, yeah, things. here it is. It's one of those things I rarely do, though. Uh, Mr. Abedenza. Yeah, Jacob. Now, I was trying to look at my welds for the tractor. I'm uh, not sure if I got them all, but this is all I can see. Okay, go ahead, put it up. Okay, so looks like the end plate is welded on. Both ends are welded. This okay. weld is welded. Intermediate yeah. weld. And two plates up here. Yeah, that's all there is. That's that's what's going to hold it together. Right. And there is no other welds in here. Nope. Now the uh, the bucket picks up and gets held between that little piece that has the stitch stitch weld and the holes. So there's nothing else. All right. Yeah, it looks good. Mr. Abadessa. <clears throat> yes, sir. I had a question about the part you gave us in lesson 15. You want us to make a drawing from that? Yeah, that little 20, 24 angle bracket thingy. Yeah. Yep. All right. So for Monday, you're going to hand in the V8. You're going to hand in the tractor bucket and that little bracket. I got to get busy figuring out you guys' next test. Oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Okay, everyone be nice from here on out. Maybe it'll be a bit easier. Writing tests is like the worst thing, trying to get just the right level of difficulty so it's, <laughs> it covers all the material. It's not trivial, it's not too hard. And I know you guys all say, oh, make it trivial. What do you think the hardest test that you gave out of all the ones that like are under your old exams are? The last one. No. 
Yeah, I agree with Andrew. Also, wasn't that bad, actually. At least in my opinion. Some of my first tests were pretty bad before I got some kind of sense of calibration. If you go look at my old exam ones, they're, they're pretty rugged. I think probably my, the first year I was teaching, I gave the whole rear suspension of a Willys Jeep as the final exam. Ooh, that yeah. does not sound good. No, so it had the frame, it had the shock absorber mount, it had the shock absorber pin, and you had to know to weld the thing and get the pin welded in position. And today I look at it and go, oh, what the hell was I thinking? So like on a scale of not to not and bolt to V8 engine, like where do you think the exam will lie? Uh, well, I don't think the V8 is all that hard. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, but it didn't look too hard in the lecture. It's really not. It's really just the mate alignments are the thing that give people fits on that and yeah. keeping the pistons from flipping around. And worst case scenario, you just put the pistons in by hand. Yeah. That's, that's not a horrible thing. I do feel like I need to move away from car parts and tractor parts though. Otherwise everybody's going to think this is the tractor class. I don't mind I'm that. already is though. And the thing about my old tractor stuff and old Jeep stuff is the geometry is simple on it. So it kind of screams out, draw me. All right, well, I got dots. See you guys later. Have a good one, Jacob. Yeah, I have to leave to Mr. Abadessa. Okay, enjoy. Thank See you. See you next uh, week. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you're going to have office hours tomorrow, right? Yes. From three to five? Yep. Or three to four. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. You too. All right. Have a good day. You too, Braden. Take care. Mr. Abadessa. Yeah, Liam. So I'm still a little bit confused about what exactly our design package is supposed to have in it. Like, is it supposed to be the parts or the assembly? Yes, yes, and yes. So we need to have a drawing for each part? Yes. So what's going to happen is you're going to hand in this. It's going to be like a 35, 40 page PDF. I'm going to open it up. Page one, you're going to show me the whole machine and any sub assemblies that need to be located. That's going to be the first stuff. Then I'm going to flip through the first three pages of that. And then I'm going to look at all of your sub assemblies. So I'm going to look at like your elbow and how you put the spacer in, or excuse me, the bushing in and how you cut it and all of that. And I'll look at that, its explosion, its bill of materials. And we'll go right down through the sub assemblies where you teach me how to put everything together. And then you're going to show me all the piece parts where you're going to teach me how to build each of the piece parts. Does that make it a little bit clearer? Yes. So do we determine like what we wanted to make as the sub assemblies? Uh, within reason, yes, you do have some flexibility. You know, as long as you give me the stuff that I asked for in the project requirements page. So for example, I want the elbow as an inseparable assembly with the bushing. So I've mm -hmm. asked you for that. And I've asked you to do the cans uh, cut at the assembly level. But the rest right. of it, you can kind of organize however you see fit. All right, so organize each uh, subassembly in the best way that we see. Yeah. All right. And one of the things you're gonna find, or a lot of students have found in the past is 
they try to take the easy way out, which they think is to do less sub assemblies. And what they find out is that by having a whole bunch of stuff in a sub assembly, doing the exploded view becomes really, really hard. Yeah. I mean, it's really ugly. Whereas if you only have between three and six components in a sub assembly, then it's nothing. You knock it out in five minutes and move on. But again, I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff and you choose the way that you think is best for you. Just do something that makes logical sense. All right, sounds good. So the plate example does not get turned in. The who? The plate example in also 15. It's just the V8, the bucket, and the drawing. Yes. The bracket. Okay. Yes. No, the plate was just an in-class example, and I should probably label it better. Okay, thanks. Oh, sorry, I had one more question. And what exactly are we presenting to you at the one-on-one -on -one meeting? So generally I sit down with each student and I say, okay, show me your crankshaft. Show me your top level model. Show me uh, your CD holder. Show me how you did the top cut can. And it's just that easy. Oh, I see. So, so you just flip through the various components. I check it out and say, no, 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 fix this or good. And we just move on. So you're just checking our parts and assemblies then? Pretty much. And then just make sure that you're on track with where your project plan said you would be. Or we talk about why your project plan was either too aggressive or not aggressive enough. But again, I'm only making 15 minutes for each of you guys. So it's not gonna be rigorous. And generally, as long as people have, you know, most of their stuff in line, then I just say, great, I'll set out your baggie of parts, come get it in Crosby. Or I'll mail it out, whatever the case may be. All right, thank you. I'm going to head out. Okay. Catch you later.